Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. The mystery of an MP and the tweet about a Brianne. UFE social media professor weighing in on this week's news from Ottawa and the Twitter controversy. Public washrooms and fountains are coming to the downtown area. And he may not have won the Olympic medal, but the pride of Cultus Lake did us proud. Our special guests this week include UFE Associate Professor of Social, Cultural and Media Studies, Kathleen Rogers, as well as City Councilor and FERD Chair, Jason Lum, and the monthly Councilor's Corner, Chilliwack City. We're also introducing a new segment, Sports Balls, with Matt and Mike, and that'll be in Josh's Sportscast. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. And and our top story. It has been a busy week for Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Strahl. He came out in favor of the Freedom Convoy trucks who occupied downtown Ottawa for three weeks. He sided with the concerns about masking rules and for some workers mandatory vaccination. Strahl was vocal in voting against the use of the Emergencies Act to disperse the protesters and released a video stating those concerns. The 30-day act was passed by the federal liberals with help from the NDP. The Conservatives, the blocks, and the Greens voted against. Well, it didn't make it to 30 days. It has been rescinded. Then there was the Brianne tweet. Strahl claiming that he was in touch with a Chilliwack single mom whose bank account was frozen due to a contribution to the Freedom Convoy. This was as the Bank of Canada were investing GoFundMe, uh, who was assisting the truckers. The controversy was that a number of independent fact checkers could not find anyone in Chilliwack by the name of Brianne, who allegedly made this contribution. Chill TV, Fraser Valley News, other media outlets all asked the MP for information and wanted to interview the woman. Strahl told Chill TV that any interview would not happen and he advised her not to talk to media. There is a Twitter account that looks suspicious as she wanted to be paid in Bitcoin. Then on Tuesday, Strahl releasing another statement reaffirming that he met the woman and saw the bank statement. Strahl declined the request for an interview and then declined the opportunity for media to see that bank account. Then on Wednesday, the National Post reporting that a leaked email that they received showed conservative MPs wanted their colleagues to quote unquote, do more checks on frozen accounts. Now, all of this is playing out on social media. Chill TV invited UFE Associate Professor of Social, Cultural and Media Studies, Kathleen Rogers, to comment on this. From legitimate media being called fake to mainstream media being insulted for simply doing their job. Here's Kathleen in that interview. Chill TV's News of the Week in conversation with UFE Associate Professor Kathleen Rogers, uh, her specialty uh, being so, uh, the School of Culture, Media and Society. Kathleen, I, I, I've been looking forward to this conversation as we have been watching the last three weeks of the Freedom Convoy uh, go in and now come out of Ottawa. The uh, Emergency Measures Act has been uh, rescinded by the Prime Minister. From your perspective, uh, 22, 23 years ago, we didn't have social media. We had basic email. We had basic websites. Would this have actually happened or worked, say, 22, 23 years ago with where we were then? Uh, or was, was this a product of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and such? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, John, I think that, um, that you're exactly right, that this is, this is a, we're, all movements, all social movements, protest movements are different today because of social media. And it wouldn't have happened like this. First of all, it wouldn't have happened so quickly. That's one of the characteristics of protests today is that they happen, they come together so quickly that they almost seem to come out of nowhere simply because they do happen um, as a result of the networking that happens on social media. But we also wouldn't have had the availability of the, the uh, funding sources that, they, that came from GoFundMe, um, et cetera, that allowed the movement to take off in the way that it did. And ironically, the Ottawa police were using social media to talk to the protesters saying, look, here's what's happening now. Uh, Emergencies Act at the time was being put in. We're coming in. Time for you to get out. Uh, do you think they paid attention uh, or they got the message that way or word of mouth or a combination thereof? Sorry, I'm, I'm 
to me that did the protesters get the message from police? That yeah, because it's, it's yeah, it, as, as everything was being ramped up on social media from their end, uh, was that, I don't know, reverse psychology from Ottawa police. Well, if you're following us, here's what we're going to do on Twitter. We're telling you to get out. Uh, I think that, that it, that's the way that business is done for the police today, just as it is for protesters. They use Twitter and all social media forms to communicate just as protesters use it to communicate amongst themselves. Uh, closer to home, uh, Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Strahl uh, had a, 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 quite a, a quite a bit of controversy starting on Sunday night, uh, again using Twitter, saying that uh, he had received uh, information from a single mom named Brianne that uh, because of her contributions uh, to the protesters, her bank account was frozen. Uh, and then everybody seemed to pile on, uh, was this Brianne a real person? There has been... Uh, fact checks left, right, and center. And then uh, earlier on Wednesday, uh, the National Post saying that they received a leaked email from conservative MPs that want colleagues to, and I quote, do more checks on frozen accounts. Uh, there's been criticism that maybe MP Strahl didn't do due diligence with social media. Uh, what, what's your take? Uh, this is not the first time a politician has brought themselves into controversy for making comments like this, whether uh, Brienne actually exists or not. Are we going to see more of these, or it, was this a warning shot that, you know, for especially for politicians, be careful, especially because of social media? Well, you asked, was social media important in, in the protest in general? And I think that this is another way that, that social media has been important was in terms of misinformation. And I think the answer to your question is yes, this is a this is an example of a, a, a warning that anyone should pay attention to, that if you're going to put information out there, people are going to see it and people are going to check out it and people are going to want you to verify that information. And I think that that story has a little bit more unfolding to do before I can comment on it too much, but I think it's an example of how easily misinformation is created online and how potentially effective and dangerous that misinformation can be, especially when it comes from what should be a very reliable and trustworthy source. Your students, uh, for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, but they have never known an era without social media. I'm the old guy, so I remember MTV and 45s, but that's a different story. Uh, how are your students reacting to, to all of this, uh, especially over the last three weeks? Uh, that's correct. They, they are they're a generation that has never not known social media. So in some senses, they're accustomed to things happening very quickly. But I have a good number of classes, and in speaking to them, they are just as surprised by how quickly this happened and how it really seemed, even though it didn't even though it seems like it came out of nowhere. So even though they're really familiar with the kind of patterns and ebbs and flows of social media, this was surprising to them as well. Yeah. Uh, do you see any other challenges coming down the, the pipe, or is this a, a major learning point for everybody involved, or are we still going to see the abuse? Of, so, of social media, you mean? The well, of, of the misinformation, disinformation, and of course, finger pointing uh, people like me, am I fake news, am I not, etc. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, the, the, this is something that's going to carry on. Disinformation, misinformation is a huge problem. It played a huge part in what happened um, during these protests, and it's something that we're going to have to pay attention to. It's something that we have to talk about openly with students as well in terms of educating them on recognizing what is misinformation, what is reliable information. Kathleen Rogers, uh, UFE uh, Associate Professor, uh, the School of Culture, Media and Society. We are going to have many of these conversations as uh, the months go on. A big thank you for taking some time off and uh, talking with us. Two new public washroom facilities with drinking fountains have now opened in downtown Chilliwack, one just north of Five Corners and the other near the downtown library. This $400,000 project was funded in part through the COVID-19 Safe Restart Grant. A total of $200,000 applied towards the investment in the downtown through the joint federal-provincial grant funding stream. There are security features in place to repel vandalism. The fountains also have a pet-friendly feature as well. 
well. With another round of Arctic outflow weather this past week, extreme weather shelters were put in place. They included Ruth and Naomi's main shelter on Fletcher and Margaret and the United Church on Spadina and Yale. That's right across from Savon Foods downtown. It is the annual event to bring awareness to those that are in need of services of the Ann Davis Transition Society and to simply keep them warm. The annual coldest night of the year walk for Chilliwack is coming up Saturday, which benefits many people in the community that Ann Davis provides a service for. Last year, that number was over 13,000. Go over to the Ann Davis Chilliwack social media for more information. In a media briefing last week, an improvement to the Agricultural Land Reserve use regulation was announced as part of the Stronger BC Economic Plan. This out, sets out to make BC a global player in the agri-tech marketplace. Now, part of this is vertical farming, which is a space saver and still provides a sustainable and, on paper, a profitable crop. This is a concept that's not new, but it will be watched closely in the Valley as farming space is limited and obviously much of which was damaged in last November's flooding. Basically, the concept is to grow in layers like apartment buildings as opposed to the current model of using those wide open spaces. Bring your gloves, your rakes, and your clippers to Sunnyside Campground in Cultus Lake on Saturday and join members of the Environment and Public Area Planning Committee to remove ivy and other invasive species from the green space. Now, if you'd like to help out and make an impact with the community, all you have to do is meet the group at noon at the Sunnyside Campground Group Campsite A that is east of Cultus Marina. And now another edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City, if Councillor and FVRD Chair, and with Councillor FVRD Chair Jason Lum, and after that, straight into the, the sports with Josh Bohr, and the new segment, Sports Balls, with Matt and Mike. Chill TV's News of the Week and another edition of Councillor's Corner Chilliwack City with City Councillor and FERD Chair Jason Lum. A uh, lot of stuff to uh, to cover here, Jason. First off, we just had another edition of Pink Shirt Day. Uh, I know the City of Chilliwack uh, it always gets involved with this. Uh, I got to ask, when you were a kid, uh, because Pink Shirt Day is all about uh, awareness about bullying, were you bullied as a kid? Uh... You know what? I actually uh, experienced uh, a bit of bullying um, when I was younger. And I mean, I've probably experienced more bullying uh, on uh, in public life than I did when I was in elementary school. So, And that's just because people on uh, social media and, uh, and Twitter these days, um, I think, are emboldened to, uh, to bully each other and act... Uh, in ways that they wouldn't act like uh, they would in person. And, you know, I'm old enough that I didn't have to uh, experience that when I was a kid. I sure wouldn't want to be, you know, a young person, uh, adolescent, growing up in the day of social media with the way people can be nasty to each other sometimes. Okay. And, of course, let's try and keep the idea of Pink Shirt Day every day. South Vetter Neighborhood Plan. Uh, last week it was presented to uh, City Council. Uh, now uh, we have public engagement on this. Is this all online, or will there be something we can actually physically go and see? Yeah, so um, as with most things in the era of COVID, um, we're encouraging everybody to go to the EngageChilliwack.com site, and you'll see uh, a bunch of information about the South Vetter Neighborhood Plan. A lot of really exciting things to contemplate, and I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, some feedback from the public. Um, obviously, it's a, a huge process by our um, by our planning team and our planning department, and you know we're really looking forward to uh, getting some of that feedback and testing some of the ideas that we're uh, putting forward. Yeah, and I see housing and green space, two of the big items there. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, single use item uh, reduction bylaw. Uh, that comes into effect April the 1st. A lot of people are wondering, are we going to have the same bumps in the road that the city of Vancouver has where you go to a fast food place and they say, yeah, Tuesday is a free Coke, but you still have to pay 25 cents for a cup. Or Has those scenarios been addressed by the, the city of Chilliwack or is it just here it is and let's live with it? No, it's it's uh, not. I wouldn't characterize it as here is here it is. Let's live with it. Um, 
we've done quite a bit of uh, work um, in industry engagement. We work closely with our uh, consultant and our different planners um, around how we can ensure that uh, we can put this um, this byline in place with the kind of least amount of uh, um, trouble and uh, inconsistency as possible. Um, there are going to be some bumps in the road, as there are with uh, a lot of things. And um, we know that we've uh, spent a lot of time working, again, with uh, industry. We, we know that um, these single-use items uh, don't belong uh, in, the, in the landfill, and we know that um, there are better alternatives. And so it's really incumbent on the city to put these, policy, um, these policies in place so uh, we can help kind of uh, uh, eliminate this stuff because really there are other alternatives and we need to be looking uh, to, uh, to utilize them instead of the single-use plastic. Keeping with the green theme, uh, electric vehicle charging stations. I know Cottonwood Mall has just opened up a, another batch of them. Uh, do we have more uh, that are coming on city property or at City Hall itself? Yeah, we actually just last council meeting, I believe, we um, we authorized an, an additional 12 um, level two chargers. So we've got more um, EV charging stations coming uh, to the city of Chilliwack, and that's good news. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Cottonwood Mall. I think those are the Tesla uh, superchargers yeah. that are in place. And so it's really going to be a combination, this effort of uh, green and um, electrifying the the um, the economy is is going to take uh, industry and it's going to take the public sector to step up. And so the city of Chilliwack is uh, doing its part. And the, the, 12, uh, the 12 additional that we're uh, installing are going to be a good thing. Last but not least, and it's already getting a lot of traction on social media, two new downtown washrooms. These are the, the loos, similar to, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, ones that uh, are used in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, the Portland Loos. Yeah, that's another long time coming. We've, uh, again, worked very closely with the downtown BIA on citing uh, the Portland Loos uh, in uh, appropriate locations that are going to be uh, useful to the public and everybody who wants to use them. They're not just washrooms. They're also, uh, they've also got uh, water fountains and water filling stations. And so uh, people are pretty excited about them. Uh, probably uh, in you know my time on council, the uh, most we've talked about outdoor washrooms uh, in 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 my recollection. So it's uh, they're a really cool uh, design. They use the um, crime prevention through environmental design, and so uh, looking forward to seeing those uh, get into operation for sure. And the obvious uh, arguments against is that uh, they. It will be vandalized, uh, there'll be drug use and such. Uh, I would think all of that has been taken into account. Um, are, is it going to be using blue light technology inside so an addict cannot see what they're doing and, and such? Yeah, there's actually a whole host of technology involved in these uh, in the Portland Loos and um, they've taken into consideration uh, some of the things that you mentioned and you know, I, I tend to be a glass half full guy, and I think this is something that the public has asked for for a long time. Um, and, you know, rather than look at, you know, the worst case scenario that they're going to get vandalized and uh, abused, I got, you know, I've got a lot of faith in the public, and I think uh, it's something that's being needed. And uh, I look forward to, you know, obviously having them uh, 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 downtown in places where uh, they're going to be well utilized for sure. By everyone. Now, now, if somebody wants to reach out to, to you uh, to just get more information, uh, what, lum at chilliwack.com? Sure. Uh, if you've got um, specific uh, inquiries about the Portland Loose, you can contact the city of Chilliwack. But if you just want to contact me to ask questions uh, to one of your city councillors, you can always get a hold of me at lum at chilliwack.com. I guess, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, in the spirit of uh, Pink Shirt, uh, uh, an anti-bullying day, you know, the, um, the theme this year is lift each other up. And certainly we could use a little bit more of that. I know uh, it's always a, a pleasure to come on and talk to you guys. And so i um, glad you're uh, raising awareness around Pink Shirt Day. And uh, certainly in my time uh, going around uh, the elementary schools, um, you know, there, I know we started the interview or asking me about bullying. Yep. And, uh, uh, what, what I see in elementary schools is kids acting uh, and behaving a lot better than adults these days. So when we lift each other up, probably just need to look to our children for uh, good examples.
Jason Lum, as always, a big thank you. Jason Lum, uh, City Councilor, FERD Chair on Councilor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Welcome back everyone, my name is Josh and this is Sports. We've got a lot to cover today, including the debut of a new program here as part of our sports segment called Sports Balls with Matt and Mike. So stay tuned for that and let's just jump into it. We begin today with the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, where last Thursday Cultus Lake's own Reese Howden competed for Team Canada in men's ski cross. In a tightly contested quarterfinal race, Reese was eliminated by mere inches at the finish line by fellow Canadian and 2018 Olympic champion Brady Lehman. While Reese will likely be disappointed with a ninth place finish, his friends and family in Cultus Lake are still proud of their hometown hero for competing and are confident that the best is yet to come for the still young 23 year old. Reese has plenty to race for this season as well. He will be competing in this year's World Cup, where he was a champion before, and certainly has his sights set on the 2026 Olympics in Milan, Italy. The GW Graham Grade 9 Girls Basketball Team are the Eastern Valley Basketball Champions, defeating United Christian 61-34. At the Eastern v Fraser Valley Basketball Tournament in at St. John Brebeuf in Abbotsford, the Grade 8 Boys from Mount Slessie Middle won the whole thing, narrowly beating Walnut Grove 48-45. Meanwhile, the UFV's women basketball team made its return to the top 10 in the U Sports National Rankings, checking in at number 7 in the latest edition of the poll released on Tuesday. The squad has been the hottest team in Western Canada since the calendar flipped over to 2022, winning 6 games in a row and 12 of their past 13. Most recently, they swept last weekend's series against UVic, currently sitting at 14-2, what a record, in the Canada West Conference play. For Vancouver Canuck and Abbotsford native Jake Vertanen, who now plays in the Russian KHL, will have his sexual assault case tried by judge and jury. Accompanied by his lawyer, Vertanen was in Vancouver last week, telling the judge that he will decline a preliminary hearing. Van Vertanen is charged with one count of sexual assault stemming from a 2017 incident, and his next court appearance is March the 9th. Registration for Chilliwack Fast Pitch closes this coming Monday, February the 28th. Players do have to mask up on the field and cleats are recommended for all categories from under 7 to under 19. More information is at Chilliwack Fast Pitch social media, so definitely check that out. Chilliwack, <laughs> pardon me, Chilliwack Giants defensive lineman camp is this Saturday, February the 26th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Townsend Park for Pee Wee and Junior Bantam. More information can be found on the Giants Facebook page. And finally, as we mentioned last week, the Agassiz Speedway will be at the Chilliwack Chiefs games this weekend at Chilliwack Coliseum. Drivers will be giving away tickets to the races for the 2022 season, as well as hats, shirts, schedules, all to promote the Agassiz Speedway facility, its cars, and the amazing drivers. Their season is going to start in May, so you don't want to miss that. And now, as promised, the world premiere, it's Sports Balls with Matt and Mike. See you next week after the break, Dawn with the Weather. Thanks, Josh. Hey Chilliwack, welcome to Sports Balls with Mike and Matt, where we take a closer look at what's happening on the Chilliwack sports scene. That's right. If it's sports related and there are balls involved, I'm on it. So Mike, when I think of rugby, I think organized chaos. I know you're heavily involved in the local rugby club. What can you tell us about the local women's program? Well, actually, as their coach, I was just with them this weekend. Let's take a look. The Crusaders Rugby Club has represented men's rugby as part of the BC Rugby Union for 44 years. And while women's rugby has gained national and global popularity, the Crusaders have worked to build their very own women's team. Headed by former Sardis Falcons team captain Landry Winkles, the team has been working diligently for months in preparation for the first game of the season. February 26th, the women's have their first home game versus Langley at Yarrow Sports Field. That looked like a great practice. It looked like they were having a lot of fun out there. Yeah, actually, some of them gave us their input. Why don't we take a look at that? Uh, what made me join rugby was uh, seeing other people play. I've watched it for years, and it's really intrigued me. And the fact that Chilliwack started a new team and we were able to all learn together really got me into the sport, and now I love it. Um, when I first started playing, I was pretty anxious, but now that I've started playing, it's been really exciting, and I'm more excited than anxious to get back on the field. Uh, my favorite thing about rugby is getting out here with the girls, uh, inviting new friends and learning a sport together and just really cheering everyone on. Thanks, Mike. 
And if you at home have any questions or comments, please email us at news at chilltv.ca. And that's our first sports balls in the bag. Chill TV weather now that the Arctic outflow has pretty much come and gone. It will be a mix of sun and showers for the weekend, and the highs could reach 12, maybe 13. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.